Hey guys, Brandon Zerby here, and if you didn't know, running is associated with a high rate of injury, and the causation of these injuries are usually complex and multifactorial. And unfortunately, I found out that the hard way this summer when I ran into shin splints, a hamstring strain, and a groin strain all within two weeks. All of my progress halted because my body was breaking down. And more than anything, I was really frustrated that I could no longer go running and train on these nice, beautiful 90 degree summer days. And equally frustrated that this could happen to me when I had been so methodical with my approach, at least I thought. Well, after reviewing my running logs, training routine, and all the scientific evidence surrounding injury prevention when it comes to running, it appears that I was due for these injuries eventually. So what did I do wrong? Although most people think stretching and appropriate footwear are the keys to injury prevention, do they even matter? And how can we reduce our risk of running injuries based upon all the scientific evidence? Well, let's get into it. One of the main things that I got wrong, despite thinking that I was doing it correctly, was slowly progressing my training ramp. From an injury perspective, strenuous running, whether it be an increase in intensity, duration, or frequency, are all vital aspects of injury prevention. And if you pull any one of these levers too far or too quickly, then you're gonna increase your risk for injury. It's why first-time marathoners are much more likely to get injured than experienced marathon runners. They're increasing their running duration and intensity to much higher levels than they've experienced in the past, and if not done slowly and effectively, it can lead to injury. This slow progressive training ramp is what I found to be the most crucial factor in preventing running injuries. Like I mentioned, I thought I was slowly progressing my training routine, but after examining my running logs, I didn't get this 100% correct. So here are my training runs for the three months prior to my injury. And from a frequency standpoint, I started off running about twice a week in April, three times a week in May, and five times a week in June. So from a frequency standpoint, I don't think there's too much of an issue here. From a duration standpoint, many people recommend not increasing your weekly mileage by more than 10 to 15%. And when examining my logs on average, I was increasing mine by about 15%. So again, from a duration standpoint, it didn't seem like this was a cause for injury either. But what I didn't consider with my training was my run intensity. So previously I detailed my four training runs for optimal health that I would just cycle through. And while I still do all four of those training runs and believe in all four training runs for optimal health and running performance, performance, cycling through all four equally turned out to be the problem. This is because three out of those four training runs, I was performing with Olympic level intensity. It was as if Usain Bolt was chasing me 75% of the time. And the problem was Usain Bolt wasn't chasing me. He had much more important things to do. But after further research, what I found out was that about 80% of my training runs should be easy runs, whereas 20% should be those hard training runs. And while this is more just a general guideline that may depend on your goals, it's a useful rule to kind of follow. And it was basically the opposite of what I was doing. So while I thought I was slowly progressing my training program, I was putting a lot more stress on my body wear and tear than I had realized. And getting this aspect of running right is critical to staying healthy. But if you were to ask 720 recreational runners for what they thought to be the top ways to prevent injuries, then slowly increasing your training routine, that ramp of running would not be mentioned. Another primary factor to preventing injury is preventing recurring injuries. Study after study shows that an injured athlete is much more likely to get Get injured again compared to an uninjured athlete. In one study examining hamstring injuries, they looked at runners' lower limb muscle strength, muscle thickness, range of motion, and injury history. Out of all the measurements, only occurrence of previous injury had a significant relationship to injury risk. This is because most people don't go see a physical therapist or go through a structured rehab process to get the injured tissue back to the level of health that it was before the injury. This makes it easier for that tissue to get re-injured again because it's unbalanced or weak. And while I've never had shin splints before, hamstring strains and groin strains have been frequent in my injury history. I've also never seen a physical therapist or went through any sort of structured rehabilitation process for any of my injuries in the past, so it makes sense now why I keep seeing these injuries crop up again. Since this happened over the summer, I have seen a physical therapist regarding these injuries, and I've also done a lot of research on my own to better understand how to prevent my hamstring injuries, groin injuries, and shin splints from happening again. And specifically, I'm a huge fan of the YouTube channel E3 Rehab, which takes evidence-based approaches to injury rehabilitation. And I've made sure to incorporate those specific exercises into my regular strength training program. And I won't mention too much on this, but a regular progressive slow resistance training program is also important for injury prevention. So whether you're using body weight, dumbbells, barbells, whatever it is, some sort of strength training program is really important for injury prevention. And then throw in those added specific exercises based upon your injury history. For example, I've recently incorporated the Copenhagen plank into my training program for groin strength. And when I first started doing the Copenhagen plank, 
I could barely do it at all. And it made me realize how weak my groin muscles were. Now my sets are at about 30 seconds holds and slowly progressing that. I've also added in Nordic hamstring curls and other specific exercises based upon my injury history. Now let's touch on some of the topics that most people believe prevent injury. So let's start off with appropriate footwear. We've all seen all of the latest advertising and marketing for shoes that may prevent injuries from minimalist shoes to maximalist shoes to costlier shoes or extra cushion shoes or no heel drop shoes, but do any of these actually matter? Well, a large study published in 2020 went through all the research and this is what they found. When it comes to several types of shoes like stability, cushioned, or motion controlled, no evidence on injury prevention. What about age of shoe? No evidence was found between how old a shoe was and injury risk. Does the shoe brand matter? No evidence. Does the cost of the shoe matter? No evidence. What about minimalist shoes? No evidence. Heel drop, the distance from ground between the front and back of the shoe? Newer runners may benefit from no heel drop, where experienced runners may yield better results with a larger heel drop, but the evidence isn't overwhelming. They concluded the study by saying that it is possible that the role of running shoe technology in injury prevention has largely been overrated. Some basic rules are still valid, such as subjective feeling of comfort when choosing a pair of running shoes, transitioning progressively and carefully into a new pair, and listening to your body when training. Along the same line, it is probably a good idea to alternate between pairs of shoes to avoid systematic mechanical overload and allow progressive transitioning to new shoes. So to summarize, despite most people thinking that appropriate footwear does prevent injury, from a scientific perspective, there's little evidence of that. And while certain shoes may be useful for certain populations in certain situations, in general, shoes aren't a great factor when it comes to injury risk. Just get yourself a couple pairs of shoes that you find comfortable and then alternate between them for your runs. But what about the topic that most people believe prevent injuries? It is a commonly held belief that strategic stretching plays an important role in improving running performance and decreasing injury risk. But the current research evidence definitively reports that this belief is in fact incorrect. While stretching may be recommended for certain people in certain situations with certain goals, Static state stretching where you're holding a muscle at length for about 30 seconds has not been shown to decrease injury risk, especially when doing them before run. That doesn't mean don't ever stretch, that just means stretching before runs is likely not going to decrease your injury risk for that run. Instead, you could probably opt for a better choice, a dynamic warm-up that's about 5-10 to 10 minutes long, incorporates lunges, butt kickers, high knees, side shuffles, and various dynamic aspects. Needless to say, this is what I do instead of static state stretching before a run. And when it comes to things like kinesiology tape or foam rolling, I also couldn't find a lot of evidence for either of these either, so I don't do either of those modalities. And the final thing I'll touch on are key areas that nobody thinks about when it comes to injury prevention. Sleep, nutrition, and cognition. In a study looking at the sleep duration of adolescence and athletic injury, what they found was that the kids receiving the recommended sleep duration of 9 hours had a significantly lower injury of risk. That study concluded by saying that sleep deprivation is associated with athletic injuries and optimal amounts of sleep may protect against injury. What about nutrition? Another study concluded that there are several nutritional solutions that can be implemented to reduce the risk of injury and decrease recovery time. These nutritional solutions include getting the optimal amount of protein, vitamin C, vitamin D, copper, and calcium. But in general, just eating a nutrient diet that meets both your micro and macronutrient goals is going to be a great way to reduce your risk for injury. And they echoed what I always say. It should be emphasized that where possible, all these nutritional solutions should be explored in a food first manner rather than a reliance on supplements. So eat your whole foods. And finally, let's touch on the cognitive aspect. Research also indicates that running at a rough time in your life can make you more susceptible to stress and injury. Studies show that in negative psychological states, low levels of life satisfaction and high levels of stress are linked to athletic injury. So make sure you're managing your stress levels too. All this to say, everything that I talk about on the My Health Sciences channel, fitness, nutrition, sleep, cognition, finance, minimalism, can all be used as tools to not only live a healthier and happier life, but also to prevent running injuries. So here are my final thoughts. Most people think that stretching and appropriate footwear are the keys to injury prevention, but from all the research that I could find, that didn't appear to be the case. First, make sure you're following a slow, progressive training routine that accounts for all the aspects of running, like frequency, intensity, and duration. Second, be sure to follow a consistent strength training program that incorporates exercises based upon your injury history. And instead of worrying about all the minute things like foam rolling or kinesiology tape or the latest recovery trend, stick to the basics. Optimize your sleep, dial in your nutrition, and manage your stress levels. This is my new plan to not only prevent running injuries, but also to live healthier and happier.
Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel and lets me know what kind of content I should be producing. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer all of those. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lastly, I offer a free health kit, which has my top 10 sleep tips, one whole foods plant-based recipe, and a mobility workout that you can stream on any device. That is free. There's a link down in the description for that. It also gets you signed to my weekly newsletter, where I provide the three most important things that I've read, watched, or listened to within the past week. All of that completely free. Link down in the description if you're interested in that. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.